Hey everybody, this is Chilton for MTG Nexus doing a quick deck guide for a deck that may not be around very long after we do this guide, but this is a deck I want to cover before it goes extinct. As we have covered a lot of the other decks on the format um, that are not that were pre-MH3. Now, not a winged wisdom is a card that on the surface has so many things wrong with it. Um, if it had been worded just a little bit differently, done something done just a little bit differently, this card would be so much more manageable. So, those of you living under a rock or choosing to completely ignore the modern format right now, Nadu is a 3-4 flying creature for those deadly Simic colors of one colorless, a green, and a blue. Um, what creatures you control have whenever this creature becomes the target of a spell or ability, reveal the top card of your library, it's a land, put it on the battlefield, otherwise put it in your hand. This ability only triggers twice each turn. On first look... Not only does this card have four toughness, which means Bolt doesn't kill it, it also gives all of your creatures this ability. And then, um, you know, just it being the Simic Colors is par for the course with things like Oko and Uro over the last several years. But the main thing this deck pairs with is Shuko, which is a equipment out of the Kamigawa block, um, which is a one mana, zero to equip. Equip the creature gets plus one, plus zero. Oh. The big thing here is the zero mana equip allows you to target all of your creatures for zero mana. Um, basically, you get Nadu, this, and usually a Springheart and Intuko into play, and the game is pretty close to over at that point. Um, it's very similar to a Yawgmoth, Blood Artist, and Undying creatures. You just kind of uh, win your opponent. However, unlike Yawgmoth, the win isn't usually deterministic until a lot of clicking and a lot of actions have happened. Um, basically, you start targeting your creatures. Um, you know, if you, have a, if you just have a Nadu, say a Wall of Roots, and a Shuko in play, you start ta targeting the Wall of Roots, target the Wall of Roots again, target your Nadu, target your Nadu. Say you flip two lands off of that, um, and you've managed to find a Springheart and Tuco. You cast the Springheart and Tuco for the two lands you just put into play. Um, then you have two shots with Shuko to hit a couple more land, or hit another land. Trigger Springheart and Tuko, which has a landfall ability, which makes either makes an insect, or if it's bestowed on something, one in a green, you can make a copy of the creature. And then from there, you basically reveal your whole deck, put a whole bunch of lands into play. And the win con on Magic Online usually is Thassa's Oracle, besides the creating a very large board state. Um, mainly because clicking is such a pain in the butt on Magic Online, and it can be such a time strain. Um, Thassa's Oracle, obviously you empty your entire deck, cast Thassa's Oracle, win the game. It's usually the most objective way to win the deck with the deck on Magic Online, and in the early days when this deck was part of the thing. Um, since then, in paper, a lot of people have gone to looping the deck with Endurance, um, basically getting their lands back, you know, Besaging their permanents, auto wiring their permanents, and then killing them with whatever th um, their battlefield is. Basically, you have a number of different ways to execute. Doss's Oracle is just the easiest, cleanest kill. Um, in addition to your shoot goes, you also have one, usually one copy of Outrider and Core. This is an Encore with the, the ability to throw around zero to redirect damage from it. Um, there doesn't actually have to be damage that's occurring. Um, and then you can do this to, you know, basically do the same thing with Shoko, just a little bit slower. Um, another piece that holds this deck together is Sylvan Safekeeper. Allows you to protect your creatures from removal, especially with access to Court of Calling and Summoner's Pact. As additional copies of basically all these various different creatures. Um, deck also usually runs amount, some amount of Urza Saga to be able to find your Shukos, as this is kind of the cleanest along with Nadi or the way, ways to win the game. Then you have Delighted Halfling and Wall of Roots, your acceleration package you used to see out of the Yawgmoth decks um, to be able to play your creatures a little bit faster. Sometimes like Delighted Halfling on one, say Urza Saga on two, Nadu, cast Nadu, and then turn three, whatever, or cast Urza Saga on one, cast Springheart and Tuco on two, Nadu on three, kind of win the game. And then from there, usually there's a bunch of bullets in this deck for different win cons or different reasons. Uh, a couple copies of Haywire Might, just because, you know, it stops random things like Pithing Needle from stopping your Shukos. 
Um, and then, you know, three color mana base, and along with one copy of Shifting Woodland, to be able to play if you're, you have a Nadu or, um, say, a Springheart Notuko or a Shuko in the graveyard to be able to get an extra copy of it. Endurance is sometimes involved in looping the deck. Uh, basically, you pitch cast it, making sure the endurance goes to the graveyard before the trigger resolves. Um, and then you just keep, you know, drawing your deck and eventually winning either with Thassa's Oracle or just kind of looping it over and over again, putting an insurmountable board, passing your turn. And especially if you besage you or water your opponent a bunch of times, um, they, they don't have much going on. You just kind of win the game with a hand sandwich at that point. Court of Calling, as I kind of mentioned, ties it all together. Teferi Time Raveler helps protect the combo, as well as Bounce Annoying Permanence once again. You know, things like Pithing Needle or whatever, shutting down your Shuko. Um, and then this deck plays some bullets. Uh, this one in particular, Sun Cleanser, is particularly good against the uh, energy decks that are running around so much, whether it's Jeskai Energy, Boros, Mardu. Um, you'll see other ones that we'll talk about whenever we're talking about on the sideboard. But that is basically what the main deck is trying to do. And the sideboard is basically answers and, you know, grindy cards. Spell pierces to protect your, your combo pieces and stuff. Same thing with Vela Summer. Vexing Bobble, this is probably primarily here for uh, pitch elementals. Um, and something you can get off of Urza Saga, obviously. Solus Jailer, this is primarily here for... Um, you know, Garoyo's Vengeance, and for Storm in particular, Storm especially has a hard time killing an 0-4. Volatile Storm Drake is basically steal your opponent's uh, annoying creature, whether it be um, something like a Harsh Mentor, whether it be your opponent's um, <clears throat> Nadu, etc. This is kind of, um, what is the name of the card? There's a Legacy S card that does something similar, but this allows you to steal your opponent's stuff. It's whatever's stopping you from doing things. Sun Cleanser, very annoying for your uh, energy opponents, hence the second copy. Drain of Magistry keeps your opponent from casting spells from anywhere other than their hands. Uh, primarily this is aimed at Storm. Um, that's really the one that's really exiling a bunch of cards. Also can randomly catch something like a plotted, uh, um, what should I call it? Uh, a plotted, any of the plot cards. Um, mainly I'm thinking uh, never mind. But anyways, anything that's plotted or anything gets exiled, say from Ren's Resolve, uh, casting it from the graveyard, etc. Also helps th against things like Living End, which does pop up on occasion and can be a bit of a tricky matchup for the Nadu deck overall. A couple copies dismember when you need removal spells for annoying things like Harsh Mentor, Opposing Nadus, etc. A couple of rings when you get into the grindy matchups. Um, force of Vigor when you need to blow up, you know, Pithing Needles, those kind of things. And then Titania, uh, very good when you kind of need a grindy, another threat that you can cord for. They can just kind of win the game on its own, especially with a bunch of fetch land. We look at this version. This version isn't a whole lot different. Um, there are a couple things here. Only two Urza Sagas in the main deck. Uh, the one of Dryad Arbor, I forgot to mention, is a card you can fetch if you have a fetch land if you're running out of Nadu triggers. Um, and the rest of the deck is, you know, basically the same in the main deck. Um, the sideboard, you know, as I've kind of mentioned, you, you have different bullets like Burnt and Forge Tender can protect you from, you know, Red Sweepers or protect your Nadu from an Unholy Heat, etc. Um, and then if you copy this with Burnt and Forge Tender or if you copy a Sun Cleanser or all these various different things, it gets very hard with these different hate pieces to be able to win through them. Uh, Soulless Jailer, etc. Rift Sweeper, this is a bit of a weird one. Um, the only thing I can think of is this is primarily to hit um, the uh, Eldrazi decks if there's a card exile with Ugin's Labyrinth or something. Um, it's the only thing I can really think of um, would be the reason for this. And I think that might be a little too cute, but when you're playing a deck with access to so many bullets, I guess you can do whatever you want. And then kind of the grindy cards that we've already kind of talked about. Another splash that showed up at the Pro Tour was basically the four color Nadu. Um, they basically splashed for two or three cards, uh, the first one being Orcish Bowmasters in the main deck. Um, this hasn't been as prevalent lately, and really even at the Pro Tour, I think the Bant version did ended up doing the best. As people realized, Volatile Storm Drake really covered most of the bases of what you cared about. Although, the one thing this deck does add to the party is the ability to play things like Fatal Push and Thoughtseize. 
um, to be able to kind of grind out a little bit against combo a little bit better or against control, you know, stealing their key card or, you know, fatal pushing their um, harsh mentor out of the prowess decks without, you know, having to take four damage to do it with a dismember. And then you get access to things like Grist the Hunger Tide. Basically, people were trying to have their cake and eat it too with some of the Yawgmoth bullets. Even sometimes you'd see Shouldered in these lists, although that's definitely kind of fallen by the wayside. But still, very similar to what you've been seeing. Basically, a Simic, Simic splashing black and then a lone splash for the Outrider and Core and Sun Cleanser. And finally is Simic Nadu. Now, this one... You're seeing a lot of the same cards. Really, the only card missing is the Outrider and Core and the Teferis. Um, beyond that, uh, this version plays you know some bullets like Talus Provisioner to be able to uh, find off of things, um, get you a little bit of a grindy thing going. Another card I forgot to mention: Finale of Devastation. This is another potential alternative win con. Basically, you get a bunch of mana. Um, and float 10, give all your creatures haste, and just kind of pop your opponent from nowhere. Uh, but, you know, much like Th uh, Thassa's Oracle, it's just a way to win the game without having to pass the turn. Um, but this deck is just absurdly powerful. And then the sideboard here, you have Surgical Extractions, Soulless Jailer. I'm guessing this opponent really hated losing to, uh, I would guess, with all these Surgical Extractions, either Storm or Garoyo's Vengeance. Pick your poison, you know, just another kind of random artifact hoser that can also hit, you know, like things like Murktide, Regent, etc. Uh, Veil of Sun to protect from counter spells, removal spells, turn a witness for a little bit of grind, summoning trap, another kind of anti counter spell thing. Um, I don't know, other than a little bit of a cleaver mana base, if there really was a reason to run the Simic version anymore. I know when the Simic versions were starting to pop up that people were trying to run the. Um, free blue counter spells or cultivate so they allow you to sacrifice a creature rather than the flare flare of cultivation and flare of uh, I want to say negation but that's not it um, basically the free counter spell that's not force of negation free cultivate um, people were playing those now they've just kind of moved away and I guess the main advantage of this is just a cleaner mana base although I do think the the Bant version adds the most utility to the deck now if you want an eye on what Nadu is weak against. The the reality is not much. Like it basically has a plus fifty one percentage against everything except for living in and demure control over some decent sized sample sizes. Um living end is tricky because basically you're taking their entire deck and putting it in their or putting their entire board in their graveyard. Um and you have some decent free spells, um whether it be you know, grief, force of negation, subtlety, you can kind of hold them off long enough, just long enough to kind of do what you need to do. And then Demir Control, um, which I'm presuming is maybe, I'm not exactly sure what's in the Demir Control decks. I would guess it's the Frog Murktide lists, and those just have, you know, decent removal spells, counter spells, subtlety, um, just enough to hold off the balance while also pressuring your opponent. Um, but, you know, you see even decks like Jeskai Control that should theoretically have a reasonable matchup. Um, you know, Storm, which is a deck I believe that they, at the Pro Tour was said to have a very good in Game 1 matchup, but then gets dumpstered in the post-war games. And then all the different energy decks, Eldrazi decks, Necro decks, even Garoyos, which has, you know, a lot of different utility. Um, Prowess, which is a deck I like to play a lot. Um, is kind of featured on the channel, doesn't have a great matchup against it. Um, I think the combo version of Prowess is a little bit better against it, but still, you know, most people are sticking more closer to the traditional Prowess, and that's just not good. Yawgmoth loses the Creature Mirror, Amulet gets kind of dumpstered by it, because, ironically, Amulet's too slow. Um, Mardu Energy, etc. So, uh, Nadu is just, it's rough. Um, you know, it's one of the best decks in the modern format ever. Um, is a deck that I believe won a recent no ban list modern tournament. Um, so that tells you the, the sheer stupid power of a deck. And then it's basically everything wrong with the fire designs. It's a push three mana card that doesn't die to some of the most played 
uh, removal in the format. Um, it actively kind of punishes removal. It has ways to protect against removal, whether it be Sylvan Safekeeper, um, whether it be Burnt and Forge Tender, um, just having multiple copies of the deck with, you know, Court of Callings and Summoner's Packs. Uh, it's it's basically Yawgmoth, but a turn faster. And Yawgmoth was already either the best or second best deck in the modern format pre-MH3. Um, so, if you take the best deck, add some better tools to it, make it a turn faster, and don't lose any consistency, um, <laughs> it's kind of dangerous for a format even, even as powerful as modern. So, as far as things do people do to attack the deck, you know, obviously, you know, something like Living End is very good, or at least reasonable against it. Um, removal, counter spells, decent pressure, um, tends to line up pretty good. But, you know, something like a mid-range deck like Boros Energy, um, you know, Necro, any of those kind of strategies don't, don't do particularly well. And, I mean, you have certain hate cards, um, Edict affects the target flyers, narrow but is fine. Um, affects that shut down Shuko and um, Nomad and Core um, can buy you time, but they're not going to win the, you the game. Um, Harsh Mentor very similarly can buy you time, deal your opponent damage. Um, your opponent can also play things not only besides Volatile Storm Drake, Skyclave Apparition. You know that's one of the things with this deck is it just has so many answers to what the format's doing, even if the format were to adapt or find a deck that could consistently beat it, chances are Nadu could adapt to beat that. And that's just really a recipe for a deck that, um, like, I don't even know that full-powered um, Fury, Grief, Scam would have had a chance against this deck. I don't know if Violent Outburst Rhinos would have had a chance against this deck. Now, Violent Outburst Living in probably be a little bit of a tougher matchup. Um... But, you know, just looking at, like, recently banned decks, I don't know that the, like, Omnath decks, you know, that had, like, Uro and Oko without Nadu would be good enough. You know, this deck just literally took the format and dumped it on its head. You know, there are no Amulet Titan decks really much. There's not really many people playing Yawgmoth. Um, even Living In has kind of petered out a little bit. Um, this deck really has just kind of warped the format, and it was... Obviously, the Pro Tour was dominant. Wizards took no action. They made no emergency bans. They basically announced until August, end of August, um, this deck's around. So, uh, if you want to play one of the most broken decks in modern history, by all means, play this deck. Just understanding that um, <laughs> it's getting banned. <laughs> so, anyways, if you like modern content, our deck guides, and modern prowess content, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. See you for our next video.